Welcome to our review on pure and impure substances. So the first thing we really need to know are a few key terms. So when we're talking about a pure substance, we're talking about one that consists of only a single element or a single compound. So literally there is just one thing, nothing else. Impure substances then, hopefully quite obviously, contain more than one element or compound. Now, one other term that you might find associated with this style of question is asking about mixtures. Now, when we talk about a mixture in chemistry, that's where we've got more than one element or compound together, but they're not chemically bonded. They're just mixed in the same space. So one of those common mixtures that we use every single day of our life is air. So the air that you are currently breathing in is a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and a few other substances as well. One other mixture that you could very well use on a very regular day is a special kind of mixture called an alloy. Now you need to know this definition of an alloy where it's a mixture of a metal with one or more other elements. So it may be another metal or it may be a non-metal. So one of the most common alloys that you will be using are the coins in your pocket. So those are alloys because if we just used a single piece of metal, then what we would find is its properties tend to be rather soft. So that means it wouldn't last well as a coin. But by mixing it with other metals or other non-metals, what we can actually do is change the properties and actually make it more hard wearing. So when we actually want to determine how pure a substance is, one of the key ways we can do this is by using the melting point. So hopefully we know that the melting point is a temperature at which a substance changes from its solid state to its liquid state. Now, if we have a pure substance, so one made of just a single element or a single compound, then that melting point is a single temperature. If, however, there are any impurities present, what we find is that the melting point will be lower than that of the pure substance, and it's going to melt over a range of temperatures as opposed to just melting at a single temperature. And one of the little patterns that we can see here is that if we have a much greater difference in temperature from our test sample to that of our pure sample that we actually know the melting point of, then that tells us that the purity is much lower. So the greater the difference in temperature, the lower the purity will be. So if we're looking at how we can determine the melting point using an experiment, hopefully, if you're thinking melting point, the most obvious thing in the world is we're going to heat it up. So when we've heating this substance, what we're going to do is record the temperature. So there's two ways that we can do this. We'll either just record the temperature at which it melts, or you're going to record the temperature at regular intervals and then plot a graph of those results. And if you do that, you'll find that you get this plateau, this horizontal line at some point in the graph. And that is your melting point. Now, when you're carrying out one of these experiments, there's a couple of key points to bear in mind. Firstly, heat the substance slowly. If you do that, it's going to allow the temperature of the whole substance to increase rather than just part of it. And secondly, you need to stir the substance as it melts and that ensures that the whole sample is at that temperature rather than having hot spots and cold spots. So hopefully at the end of this video you now know the definition of pure and impure substances and the definition of an alloy. And you also know what it is when a substance is pure and when it's impure and the effect that that has on the actual melting point.